Good morning. My name is Erin Sorens and I'm the Director of Marketing and Community here at IGS. And it is my great pleasure this morning to welcome the Minister for Education, Minister for Industrial Relations and Minister for Racing, the Honourable Grace Grace, Member for Ipswich, Jem Howard, Deputy Chair of the Ipswich Grammar School Board of Trustees, Mr Des Wyberg, Members of the Board of Trustees, Dr Michael Fanshaw, Ms Karen renton Vetalago, Ms Kelly McKenzie, Former Chairs of the Board of Trustees, Mr Adam Ward and Mr John Kent, Ipswich City Councillor, Mr Andrew Fechner, IGS PNF President, Mr Ian Rosenberg, Members of the Block Grant Authority Committee, Mr Brian Short and Mr Rod Morris, and President of the Ipswich Chamber of Commerce, Mr Philip Bell. The Chair of the Board of Trustees, Mr David Edwards, could not be with us this morning and he sends his apologies. As does Senator Paul Scar, a proud old boy and supporter of this project. To extend our welcome this morning, I would now like to invite Drew Saunders for the acknowledgement of country. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land in which we gather here today, the Jagara and Yagarabal peoples. I'd also like to pay respects to their elders, both past, present and future. Thank you, Drew. I would now like to welcome the 16th Headmaster of Ipswich Grammar School, Mr Richard Morrison. Thank you very much, Erin, and good morning, everyone. Welcome. It's great to see you all here. Uh, I'd like to especially acknowledge Minister Grace for being here. I was saying to the Minister just earlier that um, she actually made a commitment to me about two years ago that she would be at Ipswich Grammar School, and you are today, Minister. And I think uh, in relation to you holding three portfolios, um, trying to oversee over 1,500 schools, it's a pretty magnificent effort of you to be here, and we thank you very much for joining us on this very special day. Can I also acknowledge Ms Jennifer Howard, State Member for Ipswich, and all her support and positive advocacy for our school. Uh, Deputy Chair of the Board, Mr Des Wyberg, um, also today. And Board Members, Dr Michael Fanshaw, Ms Kelly McKenzie, and Ms Karen renton Vetalago. We thank you all for being here, of course. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank the State Government, through you, Minister, and the Block Grant Authority for the 715,000 uh, contribution, dollar contribution to our STEM building. And that has made the world of difference for us. So I'm very pleased today to welcome Mr Rod Morris and Mr Brian Short from BGA to be with us on this special occasion. Um, that was a very generous amount of money and really supported our project, uh, turning from dream to reality. This school uh, had a strong foundation of donation. After all, the school started because Ipswich community members in 1861 and 1862 managed to raise £1,000, which was the amount of money required by the state, state government to secure a start for a, for a grammar school. And as the ver first grammar school in Queensland, way back in 1863, we're very proud uh, of the role that those early donors played in our school. And donations uh, continue to be a strong part of the fabric of our school. However, uh, in the 30 or 40 years prior to 2020, donations were a little bit of a struggle area for our school. So it's been truly remarkable that uh, community members, parents, uh, old boys have come together to support this project so strongly. And our $10.5 million STEM building simply could not have been built without the $1,117,000 of donations from all of those community members. That represents over 200 individual donors, 14 major donors who contributed between uh, $50 and $250,000. That represents a really strong community behind our school making this building happen. I'd like to acknowledge the efforts of Karen renton Vetalago and Paul Casos, who chaired the, uh, the uh, fundraising subcommittee. So thank you to those two people as well for their involvement. Um, so the building of this uh, STEM building is really the story of a community coming together with a dream and trying to make it a reality. And this, school, this building represents the first building in our secondary school for 35 years. In fact, the last 
major opening of a building in our school was the HG Wilson Science Block in 1983. And that is indeed a very, very long time between drinks. So you can imagine the commitment and the passion of the group, the project team, to actually deliver this project and deliver a project that we could then be proud of and the boys could enjoy learning in. It's actually quite a, an amazing achievement. So I'd like to, if you can bear with me, I'd like to go through the names some of some of the key people involved in the project team. First of all, in his absence, I'd like to congratulate and thank the chair of the board of uh, Ipswich Grammar School, Mr David Edwards. As Erin has already said, he can't be here today, but his contribution was actually invaluable, not just as a figurehead chair of the board, but actually as a guy that was involved in the planning, um, the systems and the processes around our building for hundreds and hundreds of voluntary hours. So I, I thank and congratulate Mr. Um, Mr Edwards. Can I also thank the chair of the building subcommittee, Mr Des Wybord, who's also deputy chair of the board. Um, Des brings a career of achievement in engineering and business to his task as chair of the building subcommittee. Uh, and his, uh, his rigour and his sense of detail really added uh, to the quality of the final build of our, of our STEM centre. So Des, I thank you very much for your efforts. Can I thank our project manager from Jacobs, Mr. Brendan Matters, it's wonderful to see you here with us this morning, Brendan. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank Tell Design and Rachel Tell's here with us today and also the project architect, Sam Brick. Sam, it must be uh, an amazing feeling and I, I often wonder whether I should have actually been an architect because I do, I actually love buildings, uh, but it must be an amazing feeling for you to be sitting here in this lecture theatre that actually pretty much came out of your brain and walking through this fantastic building. Uh, and perhaps it might be a little opportunity for a, a brief round of applause for Sam. Uh, and of course, Rorig, our, our constructors in Alexi, great to see you here today representing uh, Rorig. Can I also thank some of my colleagues? Uh, volunteers have added so much to our building, but also the staff of Ipswich Grammar School have come together and uh, contributed their own individual expertise. So I'd like to acknowledge Tony Dawson, Mac McLaughlin, Scott Davis, Erin Sorensen, Steve Butterfield, Greg Jensen and Chris Farrelly also for their efforts in connection with the STEM project. The STEM building uh, continues an IGS love of the sciences. And really, I guess science in Queensland has developed as science has developed in Ipswich Grammar School because the the start of science at Ipswich Grammar School was a little bit shaky. In fact, science was co considered a really minor subject after English literature, mathematics and the languages. Then came the sciences. Suffice to say, though, the very first headmaster of Ipswich Grammar School, Mr Stuart Hawthorne, got everyone very excited in December 1863, the first year of the school, when he proudly announced to the staff and the boys that he had ordered a box of scientific equipment. And the box was ordered, of course, from London, England. And I can only imagine the excitement of those boys and that staff early in 1864 when the box arrived. And I'm sure sitting in that box would have been a microscope and I dare say a Bunsen burner. Understanding, of course, that Bunsen burners were first invented in 1855. So I'm, our, I'm sure our school is a leading school in Queensland, would have had one of the first sets of Bunsen burners. They probably had some glass flasks and stirring sticks and it would have been just absolutely amazing. The first specialist science teacher at Ipswich Grammar School was appointed in 1876 and his name was William Berry. And I'd like to tell you that he got off to an explosive start because he was, well he did, he was invited to the 1878 awards night of Ipswich Grammar School. And like our current awards night, that was the showpiece event for the entire school year. And there are a range of dignitaries and VIPs sitting in the front row and the second row, much as there are today. Don't worry, we won't be doing this today. <laughs> and he was invited as the first science teacher and the specialist science teacher to conduct a, an experiment in front of all these people. So he conducted an experiment which involved electricity and a bucket of water. Now, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, boys, you're sitting in the back wondering, those of you that do the science, whether that's a great idea to have electricity in a bucket of water. I'm not sure it is. And actually it turned out to be not the world's greatest idea because I'm told that the, the bucket of water exploded and water gushed over the first three or four rows of the awards night. 
Now, fortunately, Ipswich Grammar has a reputation for being fair and reasonable and polite, and I believe the teacher, Mr Berry, received a resounding standing ovation for his efforts. <laughs> We've obviously had a series of wonderful old boys who've gone on to professional careers in engineering, mathematics and science and medicine, including uh, John Bradfield, the designer of the Sydney Harbour Bridge, the designer of the Story Bridge, and we understand this week to actually have a, a city outside Sydney named after him in his honour, which is fantastic. People like Raymond Dart, the anatomist, but countless engineers doctors, medical specialists, mathematicians, engineers have actually graduated from our school and gone on and made very valuable contributions to Queensland, Australia and even globally. Some of those people are actually sitting in front of me today, which is wonderful to see. This STEM building represents the fourth generation of science facilities in our school. The first science building was finished in 1913. It is the building literally straight through the Great Hall there on top of the Oval, which is now the clothing store and the accounts office. And that was 1913, and that would have been a, a really fantastic achievement for our school back in those days. Uh, 1962 saw some science labs constructed in the uh, classroom block, the centenary classroom block, which we often call the teaching block. That was 1962. The next advance was the 1983 Harry Wilson Science Building the last building officially opened in the secondary school. And now, of course, we have the STEM building in 2021. So it's been an evolution of facilities in our school to uh, cater for the sciences, for technology, for engineering and for maths. Our curriculum has obviously also developed from those days of box wooden boxes of the Bunsen burners and now we offer physics, biology, chemistry, earth science, engineering, psychology and STEM prep all the way through to year 12. So we have a very, very strong curriculum. Uh, our, the pathway for our boys is, is actually very strongly dominated by science and engineering. They are the most popular degree courses for our school leavers. So we're, we're investing very much in this building in the futures of our boys and the future of our school. I look forward to famous future old boys, perhaps some of the boys sitting at the back on my left over there might be some of them, taking their first famous steps in science, technology, engineering and maths in this very building. I want you to remember, though, that the, the new STEM building is actually the second most important resource in the teaching of STEM, second most important resource. The most important resource in terms of the teaching of science, technology, engineering and maths in our school are the teachers. And my true hope is that this building will enable our teachers to continue to produce fantastic learning opportunities for our boys. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me today and thank you for your support. <laughs> I knew I would do that. And now, Minister Grace, I'd like to invite you to the podium. Well, it's great to be here and can I join Drew in acknowledging the traditional owners and paying my respects to elders past, present and emerging and can I acknowledge my good friend and parliamentary colleague, um, the member for Ipswich, Jennifer Howard. Jennifer, I know you made sure that I got here and um, I'm right to my promise to be here so I'm glad that I have been able to make it and um, I think one of the reasons why I decided to stay in education after the recent election um, Mr Morrison was because I needed to come here to Ipswich Grammar School. So that was one of the main drivers, believe me. Can I also acknowledge Councillor Andrew Fechner? Can I acknowledge, of course, the headmaster, um, Richard Morrison? And I think it's the 16th in 158 years. Um, an amazing accomplishment, Richard, and it's great to be here with you. And thank you for sharing your lovely words. I can imagine what that box contained from England when it first came out, and I think this building contains some things that are a little bit different, um, so that's good to see. To the IGS board deputy chair, Des Wybird, lovely to have you here. The PNF president, Ian Rosenberg. The um, old boys president, Andrew Kenman. Can I also acknowledge the architects, program managers, my representatives on the block grant authority to Robin Bryan, job well done. And um, can I acknowledge all the distinguished guests in the audience and of course the students 
that are in the audience. This is a beautiful building. And um, one of the things that struck me when I arrived and I was talking um, to Jennifer, oh, I'm at all... I'm an old All Hallows girl and we had um, some beautiful old buildings um, for a school that was in 1861. I think it's the actual um, first non-government kind of to build school too, which was really great, built in, um, in Brisbane and in Queensland. And you look at the old building and um, the thing that struck me is it is a beautiful building, but have a look at the size of the windows in that building compared to the air and the space and the light that's coming in the new modern facilities. And as beautiful as it is, this STEM building, I think, brings us into the 21st century. And it's beautiful to see you'd never want to do anything with that building than protect it and love it and care for it. But obviously, this building, I'm looking forward to see the rest of it. But you can see just the difference in the design. And I'm seeing this all over. I was lucky enough, um, Brian and Rob, to be at Hillbrook on um, Friday to open their new buildings. And um, thanks to the Block Grant Authority, um, the um, contribution the Queensland Government made to that. They were able to build fantastic new facilities at Hillbrook and it's exactly the same story. And we're seeing this all over in government and non-government schools. Um, we're injecting money into their buildings, making sure that they are world-class for our students so that they are getting world-class facilities. And um, Mr Morrison, you're right, it was a long time between drinks really when you consider the last building built and then this one here. But all good things come to those who wait. So it was wonderful to see that we've got this great facility. A STEM building obviously brings us also into the modern era. Um, you know, STEM is such an important part now of the curriculum. And, um, you know, a lot of parents and students are demanding more around the area of science, technology, engineering and maths. And um, we see a lot of this happening right throughout Queensland in developing students for the careers of the future. And that's what this is all about. And I'm sure that this building is going to provide that education that is required um, in relation to it. It is um, a $10 million, I think, around that um, with some... Um, contribution from the state as well, but it's obviously more than that. It is um, a step into the new era. And when I see some of the modern facilities right around the state, as I've said before, we can see that Queensland is taking that step. And it's been an amazing step with over the last five years, together with the non-government sector, there's been about $6 billion worth of infrastructure in schools right throughout the state, which is an incredible injection. And I really... Um, you know, struggle to think of one school that hasn't had some sort of improvement done to it, both in the government and non-government sector. And we've increased the monies in the last budget, um, that um, the last election, and you've got a little bit more work to do. I think you're handing out about 300 odd million over the next three years. So good luck with that, and I'm sure those projects like this will be coming forward. But when I open buildings like this, I always think about my favourite proverb, and it's a Chinese proverb. And it goes something like this, and it says, if you're planning for a year, plant a seed. If you're planning for 10 years, plant a tree. If you're planning for 100 years, educate the people. And I know that at Ipswich um, Grammar School, fantastic education has been happening over the last 158 years, and th this building is going to continue our great education of young people in this state so that they can embark on the careers of the future. But more than just giving you the tools that you need to advance your academic qualifications, the schools in Queensland do a wonderful job with that extended thinking, that thinking outside the box, that creative thinking that I know a lot of businesses, um, I think, value more than just the academic, that ability to problem solve, that ability to work collaboratively, that ability to be able to come up with an idea. And you'll see the modern workplaces now that are advancing in leaps and bounds are buildings like this where you walk in and there's that great collaboration. There's um, theatre-style learning spaces for students because we learn from each other and some of the great ideas in speaking to some of the leaders of Google not too long ago <coughs> have come from 
their staff spaces where they're sharing a cup of tea or a coffee and they're collaborating and the ideas germinate and that's where they come from. So that well-rounded education you're getting here at IGS and um, you know in other schools around Queensland is what makes me proud as Minister for Education. But I know there's a number of proud people in the audience and so you should be. Um, who knows, our next generation of STEM stars may come from Ipswich Grammar, I'm sure they will. In closing, I'd like to give a big congratulations to Ipswich Grammar on the opening of this important facility today. Thank you to Headmaster Richard Morrison. The board, of course, can I acknowledge each and every one of the board members that are here, the school staff, the teachers, the students, and everyone involved in organising today's events and bringing together this wonderful building. It makes me proud as Minister for Education, and I'm very happy to be here for the official opening of your new STEM building. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. That was a, a very, very special speech. You obviously put a lot of thought into that, and I thank you. Um, I'm also uh, fascinated by your three portfolios. Um, industrial relations, I learnt a little bit about. Uh, my dad was a carriage builder in the railway workshops around Ipswich for over 40 years, uh, where he learnt his trade. And, uh, and that provided the bread and what have you for our family. Uh, but what he did teach me uh, was the important lesson of fairness and particularly fairness in the workplace. So uh, industrial relations is a, one of the foundations of our society. Racing, and um, if I can just show you my, uh, <laughs> my cufflink here, my cufflinks. Um, Sharon and I have responsibility for two rather well-performed uh, geldings. Uh, but we have also have four up-and-coming fillies um, here in Brisbane. Well, some on the downs at the moment. Um, and uh, we're really looking forward to getting our share of the prize money from <laughs> Racing Queensland. <laughs> so <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but uh, I think by far uh, we would all agree that education... Education is uh, perhaps the most important of those portfolios. Um, uh, providing a, a framework of discipline and, and the basic learnings that are necessary for our children, that foundation is what ensures the future of our society. Uh, without that, there is nothing. We lose our whole civilization. So thank you, Minister and uh, I appreciate your efforts. On behalf of the board, I will say that the five women and the three other men who make up the board have shown me extraordinary support and I appreciate the vision that they have had for this project. It is great to work with those people. It's a shame that they cannot all be here today, but I appreciate those who are. As well on the building subcommittee, uh, there are two fellows, uh, James Long, who I think might have just got here on time. Yeah, well, well done, James. I know you're busy. Uh, and Brett McKenzie, who unfortunately could not be here. Uh, Brett is trying to, as he rang me this morning, he was trying to complete buildings in all of this wet weather. And he is a hand-drawn builder, um, and I wish him luck. But they have been uh, of excellent, great assistance throughout this project. Now, from the, the viewpoint of, uh, of a career of 38 years in engineering uh, and leading a uh, professional services firm, uh, I think I have a perspective having been involved with many building projects in quite a few different countries but I can rate this project as being an extraordinarily successful one. Uh, there was a lot of heartache. Uh, the funding, and we're not a rich school, but the funding was extraordinarily important. I thank you for that, Minister. 
the getting approvals, it was very difficult to find a spot on this site where we could actually build the building. Uh, and getting the heritage approvals, which are important, that were necessary for us to be able to have this building. They were extraordinary challenges. And so the last 12 months of the construction was probably the, one of the easiest parts. And we have to thank, and I'll make mention again of the architects, the Rachel and the Sam. They have done an excellent job. Their vision, uh, it was so wonderful to see it executed. We were able to get this building within our budget and the builders were able to do that and to complete it within our time frame. So well done to Cal Design, well done to Rorig, well done to everyone else on the project. Exceptional performance. Now, Richard, our headmaster, has spoken about the history of science and the importance of science and mathematics at the school. In the acknowledgement of country, which we might reflect on, the first scientists on this site were actually those people. If we think about the knowledge which they had gained over tens of thousands of years, their understanding of the landform, of the fauna and the flora, but also of the climate and the changes which would have inevitably occurred over that time, the bushfires and the floods, all of that contributed to their great knowledge and learning in how to manage the land. And we would have done better if we had taken the time to perhaps understand their great knowledge, their great science. And they should be recognised as the first scientists on this land for what they achieved. Now, Richard spoke about the importance of science, and he's not the first headmaster to have done that. In 1965, Basil Heath was speaking to the assembly, and I was a, a boy in grade eight, but I can remember very, very well how he spoke about the need for us to study those subjects but how technology, how our society was dependent on, that te on technology, how we had to continue to develop that and, and our future success as a nation was entirely dependent on those things. So, Richard, it might give you some comfort or some encouragement to know that a headmaster's words can enter the brain of a 13-year-old boy and remain lodged there. Uh, quite an achievement, I would think, but <laughs> I'm sure you do well in that regard. Uh, but um, the success of this project gives us uh, great, um, great encouragement and confidence to go forward. Uh, you can see that the 1863 building still needs some windows, uh, so there's some work required there. Uh, a lot of uh, restoration is required of the Great Hall. Uh, and also we cannot forget the humanities. It's extraordinary that we shouldn't forget our humanities. And so the refurbishment of the H.D. Wilson Building for the Arts is a project which we must find a way forward. I'd just like to close uh, by acknowledging my parents. Uh, this room is named in their honour. Um, my mum and dad lived in a, uh, with their four sons in a very modest home right next door to the railway workshop so dad could just cross the street in the morning and be at work. And they had their four sons, after attending Ipswich North State School, were each able to attend the grammar school. And that was an extraordinary achievement for them uh, and it placed a lot of uh, onus on us to, uh, to do our schoolwork. Um, I'm pleased to say that each of us 
uh, found mathematics and science and the other subjects uh, to be of great interest. And uh, we, uh, we each gained scholarships for university and, and the four of us all had very, very wonderful careers in, in engineering. So, um, and that's why this is named the Wideboard Lecture Theatre. So, I would now close and invite the Minister and the Headmaster to come forward and perform the official opening ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, now that the building is open, we'd like to invite you uh, to take a look through. The boys will be going on morning tea in about three minutes, so you will hear a very loud bell if you're not used to being in a school environment at morning tea time. Uh, I suggest you put your back to a wall and let the boys go through. We will be serving morning tea in the foyer out here. If you'd like to join us first out here for a cup of tea and something to eat, and then staff will be available to show you through some of the rooms and explain some of the equipment. But please be our guest, join us for morning tea and join us to look through our beautiful building.